One of the classic Christmas songs proclaims it's the most wonderful time of the year. Well, when actually it can be one of the most stressful and potentially harmful times of the year. I generally deal with the subject of suicide more than I do the reason for the season during the holiday period. The National Institute for Occupational Safety, they made this statement. Police work becomes one of the few jobs which has a potential adverse effect on the total life of the worker. That is, the policeman's job affects one's own personal social life, the family's social life, and the children's perception of him or her as a father or mother. So on top of that tidbit of information, add the decorating, the gift buying, the gift giving, added social events, work, church, school, family, extended family, cooking, traveling, <laughs> and all the while praying the cat doesn't chew through the electric Christmas light cord and fry itself back there behind the couch. Maybe you've seen the movie, I don't know. <laughs> the icing on the cake is when the credit card bill comes in next month for all of this seasonal celebration. So let me ask you a question. How do you spell stress? S-T-R-E-S-S, -S. yeah. You see, that can lead to cardiovascular disorders, alcoholism, suicide, divorce, and much, much more. The work-related dangers of temptation to use excessive force is much greater when an officer checks 10-8 with an already stressed-out attitude. Most of the time, we can deal with the symptoms of stress, proper eating, if you eat healthy food, daily exercise, correct breathing exercises, and getting enough sleep. But you see, treating the symptoms doesn't effectively solve the unresolved root issues. And one root issue is how we interact with family. You're living at home family. The spouse, the kids, the pets. Your extended family. Mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, ma-in-law, pa-in-law, aunts, uncles, cousins, various others, in-laws and outlaws. Or the third family, your cop family, co-workers in your agency. All the way to law enforcement officers in general. Then introduce isolation to any one of the categories of family that I just mentioned and you end up with some degree of conflict which is going to cause stress. Let me give you an example. You work overtime and it affects the spouse and the kids. You don't work overtime and it affects the sergeant, the lieutenant, and your paycheck. <laughs> Don't go home for Christmas and see the in-laws and what happens with that. Right. So in an effort to give you a small snapshot of how holiday stress added to this pre-existing scenario I just gave you can be the breaking point for some folks. Here, here's a snapshot. And I'm going to use the male as the officer and the female as the spouse, but we're all aware that in real life those roles can be reversed. All right. Here it is. Police officers are required to work long hours. Family plans are often interrupted by departmental needs. And the male police officer who is struggling with his need uh, to achieve and produce to demonstrate his self-worth he often becomes preoccupied with work. His wife, whose self-worth is predicated on their relationship, she's discontented with second place. He feels the need for autonomy. She wants to be consulted and to consult. She wants to share feelings and emotions. He thinks he must work out problems for himself. To accept gratuitous advice from the outside, i.e. the chaplain or other counsel, for the male is a sign of weakness. She expects tenderness and sensuality in sex. He's physically aroused but emotionally distant. He needs sex to get close to his feelings. 
but she needs to feel emotionally close before she can respond. <laughs> so add that to police training and how to deal with tragic and violent situations. And you have officers suppressing their feelings and emotions. You are taught to quickly survey a scene, make a decision, implement a plan of action, and you're taught as an officer to take control. Such training serves you well on the street, and most male officers feel quite comfortable in this role. Unfortunately, this training can create havoc within your family when you carry an authoritarian attitude from the street into the home. The result at your house is a breakdown in communication. Family discord that leads to homegrown stress. And homegrown stress adds to job stress and the family gradually becomes dysfunctional. Add holiday stress now. On top of all of that, <laughs> and you can have ignition and a major malfunction. So, you don't have time for me to talk about the issues of loyalty or money, or power, or children, discipline uh, in this session of Cop Church. So let's cover a few techniques for survival in our remaining moments. There's a book. It's called Seven Basic Quarrels of Marriage. Betcher and Macaulay. They make the following suggestions. First, Take comfort in minor pleasure. For instance, you and your spouse take a walk around the block and talk. But talk about something you both love. Don't let the problems of the day invade and rob you of this private time. Guard it carefully. Maybe you both love reading, so read to each other from a book you have in common. Or take the kids to the park while they're over there playing. You two sit down and communicate what you love about each other. Belong to at least one social group. But just make sure it's one you both enjoy. Second technique. Maintain ceasefire signals. Agree to a word that's a timeout signal. To stop a quarrel that's escalating out of control. Take a one hour break. Be civil to one another. This time can be used to pray, meditate, or maybe just experience the calming effect of silence. The third technique, be aware of gender differences. Guys and gals are different. Seek to discover the hidden factors which impact a quarrel. Learn negotiation strategies. And here's just a few to remind you of troop school or a leader or whatever. One, Separate the people from the problem. Two, focus on interests, not positions. Three, invent ways that both sides can profit by coming to an agreement. Four, insist on some objective standard for the settlement terms. Because negotiation has a strong appeal to one's sense of fairness. Fourth, fourth technique. Couples should relearn what they tend to forget over the years. The longer we're together, we forget this. How to praise. Ooh, baby, you look good. <laughs> to show affection and concern. To show sensitivity in small things. Or even to use good manners. All too often, these attitudes have been replaced by criticism or withholding or emotional blackmail. And the result is that both partners have lost value. And the goal is for you as a couple is to reclaim each other's value. Finally, as a chaplain, I take my model from Jesus of Scripture. I found that Jesus didn't go around the countryside saying, I love you, and I love you, and I love you. Yeah, that's not what he did. Love is an action word. So Jesus went around the countryside doing things for people. That's the way he demonstrated his love. He also conveyed acceptance by his presence with them. Might have been in a boat, on a mountainside, at the supper table. You can do that. We 
need to understand that if I'm conveying love to my wife, I don't convey it from my point of preference and interest. I speak her particular language so she can understand I'm trying to love her. If you make a traffic stop and there's a language barrier, don't you call for an interpreter? Or do you just throw your hands up and let the offender go? Mm, I hope not. <laughs> Learn your spouse's language. Don't throw your hands up. Thanks for watching Cop Church. Instead of just wishing you a happy holidays or a, have a merry, holly jolly Christmas, I thought I'd give you a little peek into how that can be possible. See you next time. Father, I just pray for the officers, their families. They're under a lot of stress. Holidays add to that stress. And Father, instead of dealing with all of the negatives, may it be a time of peace. Peace and goodwill. I know it's not going to be peaceful on the street, but Father, we're praying for peace at their house, in their home, with their families, the folks that love them and the folks they love. We love you, Father. Thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.